Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson and I thank you for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I am always excited to come and spend some time with you and the Word of God and I am learning more and more that it is up to us on how we see our day. It is up to us, it really is, the flow of our day. Yes, we're going to have situations that are not pleasing and, and, and they try to bring us out of character. A lot of the times they are very challenging because it is really all about where our spiritual and moral maturity is. So there's so much at play. And when I tell you that I have a choice about the outcome of my day, I really do. I am learning what the enemy thought for evil, God will turn it around for my good. So as I face different situations throughout the day, I am learning to pray more within I am learning to go to the scripture and to say it's going to turn around for my good. All things are going to turn around for my good. I may not like the way someone said something or the way they acted. Listen, I might have been out of character. I, I might have said something that was harmful to someone and I will repent and I will ask for forgiveness. But I determine what flows out of my mouth because I am conscious of what's going on in my heart. So let us remember to turn and shift the atmosphere. There is so much negativity around, so much negativity is spewing out of the mouths of those who say that they are believers and sometimes it can be so toxic that uh, it's just not good and healthy so i just wanted to share that with you and and just redirect your thoughts uh, not everyone is against you sometimes we keep going through the same tests same type cycles because we need to grow up Mm -hmm. we need to grow up and so change your thoughts have your mind renewed refreshed you determine the day that you're going to have also uh, and I'm going to get to our topic today I just wanted to cover this a few years ago I learned this concept and it was when I worked at a company and I would consider my yearly review at times at first, I would get offended because I thought, listen, I was doing the best of the best of the best. But I realized that the review was an opportunity for me to learn where I needed to grow up at, what I needed to mature in. And so if you are an individual and you keep coming upon the same criticism, don't say it's them. Mature. Take that opportunity to see that area and to grow in that area. Don't allow another opportunity to come that you fall short in that area. I'm telling you, you can redirect, you can shift the atmosphere. You have the power to do so. This morning, I shared with uh, one of our ministry groupings, which is Sisters in Unity, Give yourself a better chance than you did yesterday. Greetings. Sometimes we look for some great powerful word from others to pull us up out of where we are. But this morning, I simply want to encourage you to give yourself a better chance, opportunity than on yesterday. Shift your outlook. It is up to you and what you feed your body, mind, and soul. And if what you served yourself yesterday made you have an upset stomach, then today choose more wisely. Get up and do something with what God has placed in you. That's the word. 
All right, when we come back, I am going to go into our topic for today. Let the vision speak. I am so excited about what I'm going to share with you today. Yes, let the vision, let the vision speak. Sometimes we talk way ahead of the vision. Uh, we, we talk when we're still in the, the, the process of getting what God wants to say to us. And uh, there's no better way to say it. But sometimes we just talk too much. I would like to invite you, if you are one who are interested in learning more about the prophetic, we have a class coming up entitled Sounding the Alarm Through the Prophetic. This is a four-week class, which will begin November the 21st, 2022 at 6 o'clock p.m. The class is virtual class participation will include a workbook in class discussions reflect and review and a quiz after each chapter once again four weeks beginning november the 21st six o'clock p.m so we'll have our classes on monday the cost for this course is 100 dollars per person which is the equivalent of $25 per week. You can either receive a physical copy of the workbook or a digital copy. The choice is up to you. We're going to cover subjects such as what is a prophet and a watchman? What are their responsibilities? What do they do? Some spiritual authority. And we're also going to explore some examples from the Word of God, as well as share some personal experiences with you. For more information on how you can register for Sounding the Alarm through the Prophetic, please email us at the Balance of Life one at yahoo.com and we will take care of sending you out registration information as well as providing you with a syllabus all right so our word today is going to come from one of my favorite areas of scripture i share it quite a bit because listen i just believe god at his word and that's going to be over in habakkuk the second chapter so it came to me this morning, let the vision speak. Sometimes we share details of what God is about to do through us prematurely. And we speak before we have written any portion of the vision. Now I am a firm believer in the word of God. All scripture was written by the inspiration of God. And I take it to heart. The more I walk in Christ, the more I am learning to take God at his very word and, and following the instructions that he has given unto me. He gives us instructions as individuals, then as a whole. On this instance, many have a vision that God has given unto you. But before we fully understand what God is saying, we run and we talk about it. And then we wonder how and why it did not unfold, why it is hindered, why that there are sabotaging spirits sent towards it. It is because we did not follow the instructions given to us in the word of God. Habakkuk, the second chapter, begins with, I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And so even when we begin to get uh, portions of the vision, instructions and invitation uh, from God, for a work that he wants done in an area we talk about it we don't fully understand it but we start talking about it we haven't even gotten the fullness of the first segment yet or we have moved in our own direction we have moved in a way that we think it should go 
And we have not waited for God to tell us how he wants this vision to plan out. That's why sometimes it just doesn't work because I didn't wait on God. I saw the vision, I moved, I jumped ahead, and I just did it my way, and, and, and it wasn't God's way. God says, I have a purpose and a plan. I know the thoughts and plans that I have towards you. Well, guess what? That includes the vision as well. Verse 2 says, And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that may that he may run that readeth it, that he may run that readeth it. So first, I, I, I'm getting an understanding of what God is saying to me, what he is calling me to. And I'm getting corrected from the way I thought to what he wants. Now I can write the vision. I didn't say speak. I said, I, now I can write the vision. Verse 3 says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak. So the vision shall speak for itself. Let the vision talk as it is unfolded, as it is manifested. And so, you know what? As I was thinking on this right here let me tell you something ah uh, some words hit my spirit and i'm always going to tell you and believe me when i say i am the first partaker i am i am the first partaker i have learned to slow down let me tell you something i have learned to slow down and let the vision speak So here are the words that came to me concerning let the vision speak. It says, did you know the vision is not supposed to speak until the end? How do I know that? Because that's what the scripture just said. It says, it says for the vision is yet to come. Uh, the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end shall speak and not lie. The vision is not supposed to speak until the end. In fact, it is the vision that does the speaking by being revealed, manifested. After being reproved by God is when we write the vision. So, shh. In other words, be quiet. Listen, write, work. Then let it speak for itself. I'm just the messenger. So, let's break that down. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end... It shall speak. And how does it speak? It speaks by being revealed, by being manifested. And how does it speak once again? By what was written. Whenever you are instructed to start the process of writing the vision. So let's look at this. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. Okay, so that is with individuals that you are connected with whom God would allow to see your vision. Verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision has an appointed time. Don't rush the vision. Don't move ahead of the vision. Uh, don't don't try to conquer up to, to listen. In other words, what I really want to say is you don't have to prove to anybody by jumping through all of these hoops and 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 proving that you are doing the vision. You don't have to do that to anybody. The vision will speak for itself. Once you know that you know that you know within you that God has called you to something and you follow the instructions given unto you, released by the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is always, always, always only going to give you what he hears from God. As you follow those instructions designated for you, instructions designed specifically for you, follow those instructions. You do not have to go about and say, oh, I'm working on this portion, I'm working on... You don't have to go about and prove to anybody that you are at work. Giving out all these details. You do not have to do that. The vision will speak for itself. You just listen 
and work. I'm going to say that again. Listen, write, work. Listen, write, work. The vision will speak for itself when it is manifested, when it is revealed, when it is shown. That is how it is done. Sometimes we think that we have to prove to people along the way that we're working, that we have a vision. I got a vision and I'm doing this and I'm doing that and I'm doing that. No, sometimes we talk too much because everyone that you are sharing with is not exclusively happy that you are working to do the work and will of God because, and this is just some plain truth, if you're constantly sharing with somebody who is not doing any of the work that they are supposed to be doing, they're not always, they, two things could happen. You can provoke them to, to move ahead and to get busy, or you can provoke a jealousy spirit. Now, anytime I share with anybody, I am very, very cautious on who I share with. I have become even more cautious on who I share with. And I'm sharing with individuals who I want to provoke to get to work. That we have something in common. But what I'm saying to all of us today Let's follow the guidelines of scripture. Let's follow the order of God. Let the vision manifest before you start talking about it. Stop giving the enemy opportunity to hinder portions of what God has called you to do. He can't stop the work of God. Only the individual who decides to stop working can stop the work of God but no Satan the enemy whatever you want to call him he cannot stop the work of God we yes we give him opportunities to come in and to steal kill and destroy we give him those opportunities I'm going to share with you briefly how we give him opportunities and it starts in the mind immediately 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 when God invites us to do a work in a in a area he wants to do work in that is the main focus which we must all keep into an account God wants to do something in an area he wants a willing vessel who will come be obedient who will listen to his voice who will act and move in faith that is always going to be the case God gives the invitation for an area he wants work done okay immediately the enemy will come in and say oh I can't do that that's too big for me whether you are one person uh, two people three people uh, a group of people immediately the person who received the vision who received the information the next thing that is going to happen is the enemy is going to attack your mind and he's going to tell you, you can't do this. He's going to, uh, you're going to look at the size of what God is calling you to because it is big. And immediately the enemy is going to say, you can't do that. That's too much for you. And he's going to cause you to begin to examine your finances and you're going to say oh i can i can definitely not do that i can't do that i don't have the finances it's just me not only do i i don't have the finances that's a lot of work i don't have the time all of those things are going to flood your mind all of those things are going to try and interrupt what god just invited you to mm -hmm. okay that's one way he's going to First, mess with your mind. Then, he's going to put a fear in you that you can't handle that level of work. Mm -hmm. He's also going to cause you to uh, uh, re-question your finances. I can't afford that. Mm -hmm. All of that. Then... He's going to bring in a, a, a thought of um, 
people are going to look at you like you think you all that. Why are they doing that? Yeah, negativity, negativity, all of that. And that happens as soon as you get the invitation to join God to do a work. That's why it's so very, very careful that you be quiet. Do like Nehemiah did. Nehemiah was quiet. He looked, he observed. He waited for God to talk to him. And then he didn't share with anybody until an appointed time where God had laid upon his heart. Oh, we have some examples in the word. We have instructions in the word of God that I believe we can follow today. Someone might say, oh, that was then, that was the Old Testament, or, or they might even say that was the New Testament. But I believe that the word, it stands forever. In the beginning was the word. The word was yesterday, today, and it shall be forevermore. The word is not going to change. The methods may change, but God's word shall remain forever. Everything is going to go down except for what? The word of God. The word of God is always going to stand strong and true. The word of God, it was written for us, for our instructions. And I just wanted to encourage you today that whenever you have been invited to do something for God, he already knows everything that you have. He wants your obedience. He wants your faithfulness. He wants your humility. That's what he wants. He's going to make the provision because after all, it's him that wants to do the work in an area. Now, let me say this right here. Don't you go and uh, get in over your head. Don't try to make the vision out of more than where it is supposed to be in the beginning. You understand what I'm saying? In other words, God just tells you to do this. And you take it upon yourself to double it. Well, if you double it, guess what? It's going to put a strain on you. Because you are not ready to work at that level of double yet. Work in that capacity first. Get stable in that. Grow in that. Where you have been faithful over little, God will make you faithful over much. So don't try to do more just to look good before people. Because listen... At, if you crumble and fall because you tried to do so much above your authority, above your capability, they just going to sit back and laugh at you. I didn't say they were going to come to your rescue. I said they were going to sit back and laugh at you. So I want to help many of us today work in your area of capacity, work in your area of your anointing. Work in the area of your authority. What did God give you the authority to do? Work in that. And as you become faithful in those areas, then he will add more unto you. But I want us to slow down every now and then. Listen, we get excited. We get really, really excited. We really do. But let the vision speak. And the vision is done through manifestation. When it appears. But listen, write, and work. And let the vision speak. Amen. I thank you for joining us today here on The Balance of Life. I am Pastor Angel Ferguson, and I thank you for joining us today. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. God is just amazing, and I love him for all that he does in our lives. Also, this morning, we gave out a morning prayer. You know, you're always on my mind and in my thoughts our morning prayer is, may your days be full of joy and your nights share a whisper of gratitude that once again you made it through. 
with our prayers towards your prosperous life many blessings upon you i really really appreciate each and every one of you who are part of the listening audience of the balance of life i also thank god for those who are part of our television ministry I thank you for your prayers and your words of encouragement. I thank you for just, God is just good. He is good and he is worthy to be praised. And I thank God for you and where you are. I know that God has great plans for your life. I know that God is working some things out in your behalf. I believe that as you pray, you believe and it shall be. I also believe in unifying in the spirit. I believe that you can be on your end of town and I can be on my end of town. And if God puts a prayer in my heart, he has put that prayer in the heart of someone else. And if we both show up for the assignment of prayer, we are praying on one accord. I truly believe that and I also believe the Word of God over in the book of James in the fifth chapter where it says pray ye one for another that ye may be healed that's right pray ye one for another that ye may be healed that we all may be healed and so if you are dealing with a situation begin to pray for someone else dealing with that same situation now here's the most beautiful thing you don't have to know a particular person that is dealing with that all you have to do is say Lord I know that there was someone else dealing with and begin to name those things out that you are dealing with whether it is sickness in the body whether there was a need for a financial breakthrough, praying for our children, praying for our loved ones, our finances, our ministries, our businesses, things that we need personally in our life. If you would begin to take the components of what you need, I'm talking about vision still. This is all connected to vision. Whatever it is that you need, whatever it is that you're going through, I believe the word of God. Pray for one another that ye may be healed. And it shall be. It shall be so. Call out those things. You know what you're going through. You know what you are facing. And if you would begin to pray for someone else, Pray for someone else. I know without a shadow of a doubt that God will begin to heal them and he will heal you as well. I know he will. I believe it with every fiber in my being. God is good. And yes, he is absolutely worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be adored. He is exalted in all the earth. And we believe and we trust by faith that God is. God is. He is an everlasting God. Everlasting. And there is no good thing that our God would hold from us. So remember our words of encouragement on today. The vision is not supposed to speak until the end. In fact, it is the vision that does the speaking by being revealed, manifested. After being reproved by God is when we write the vision. So, shh. In other words, be quiet. Listen, write, work. Then let it speak for itself. 
That's over in Habakkuk, second chapter, first through the third verse. Have a blessed day, everyone.